It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's Countywide. Welcome to County Wadham, Kyle Benedict. Today we are talking fire restrictions and across the Prescott National Forest within the city of Cottonwood, really a county-wide fire ban across Yavapai County went into place Thursday, June 1st. So we have uh, Pete Gordon, Prescott National Forest Fire Staff Officer here in studio, as well as the uh, Cottonwood Fire Chief, Mike Kirkendall. Thank you both for being here today. Well, good morning, thank you. So it was, uh, you know, I guess earlier, a week before Thursday, we were started getting word that meetings were taking place to kind of figure out if restrictions were going to go into place on the first and then Wednesday, Thursday hit and all of a sudden everyone was sending out press releases so it was kind of like a, a joint movement really. Um, and I guess first off, Pete, could we maybe talk about, because the first press release we got was from the Prescott National Forest and it was I think a week before, mm -hmm. um, just stating that okay, hey, we're Fantastic. planning on it. Yep. Um, can you talk a little bit about what goes into sure. um, deciding to go into restrictions or at least looking at fire restrictions? Sure. Um, I think first I'll address uh, how we look at it uh, internal to the forest and then uh, uh, remind me if I don't get to it, talk a little bit about how we coordinate among yeah. all of the agencies and the jurisdictions. Um, for us, it, it's several factors go into making the final decision. Um, and probably the forefront of that is the, the science, the conditions. And we look at the trends, how quick are the fuels drying out? When was the last you know, amount of precipitation? Um, are things getting more volatile? Um, and we have several indices that we'll look at that help guide that, showing the trends coming out of winter and getting into the hot part of the summer. But then we also look at activity on the forest. Is it high visitation? We're getting into the summer season. We've got holidays on either end of the summer. Mm -hmm. um, how many folks are coming to the forest? We also look at resource availability. Are there lots of large fires in the area committing resources? Are, are we expecting less to be available for that initial attack? Um, and then we look at the social and political impacts, economic impacts. Uh, we recognize that you know, our neighbors, the communities around us, rely on some of the tourism that the forest draws. And if we're uh, shutting down campgrounds or preventing certain activities because of fire restrictions, that can have an impact. We think it's small, but it's still an impact nonetheless. Um, the coordination piece, we start fairly early. I would say this year, I think we started in about mid-April. All of the federal and state agencies with wildfire responsibilities, uh, we have a co conference call uh, geographically based. So Central Arizona, we're on the phone with the Tano National Forest, uh, State of Arizona, uh, and the county, Yavapai County joins those phone calls. And we start updating each other on the conditions and the situation. And that just leads to uh, better conversation down the road as we get closer. From there, um, we have a lot of individual relationships. So with our fire departments, we meet uh, monthly on both in the Verde Valley and the Prescott side with the fire departments. We'll have those conversations at those meetings. And then um, our county emergency manager will take a lot of the information from these uh, weekly phone calls and disseminate that information to the fire chiefs. And uh, we all kind of come together and even talk between those phone calls and, okay. and let, let each other know what we're planning. Yeah, it seemed like as we were getting word that, um, you know, fire restrictions were almost going to happen for sure. I mean, it seemed like within Cottonwood or throughout the Verde Valley um, and even along I-17, I think everyone's been hearing it on, on the newscast or the TV stations down in Phoenix. Um, but specifically here in Cottonwood, it seems like little fires have been popping up and that was almost right at the time as we started hearing about fire restrictions. So talk about how, um, I guess, the, the local jurisdiction's role in kind of helping plan out fire restrictions and your reporting back to the overall agent, other agencies. Well, at least I can speak within the city of Cottonwood, yeah. and I think it, uh, as, as Pete had mentioned, uh, we're in constant contact as we get in towards fire season with the Yavapai County Emergency Management. And uh, they're highly involved in the phone calls and those, and we could be involved, but it just, uh, they kind of work as a clearinghouse, I know, for at least for, for our municipality, and I believe for most of the fire districts. And then uh, as we get closer to, to what to, would appear the restrictions come in, we start uh, conversing on a almost daily basis with, you know, where are you guys at, how do you feel things are with you and your, your community. You know, I'm responsible, and our fire marshal and, and our fire inspector, uh, we're responsible for for uh, gauging within our community uh, what we see as the, you know, the uh, hazards. And we can go unilaterally, but it's just 
uh, we find that when when things are getting bad in cottonwood and as we've seen it uh, certainly the drying of the weeds and and we've had you know a number of weed issues this year uh, because of the growth that we had with the wet winter that we had that whatever we're facing the other municipalities and the local uh, fire districts are also facing the same thing so it just works to coordinate better so that uh, people aren't confused we found from years ago when everybody went into restrictions at different times, people were very confused. Mm -hmm. Now, by, uh, by trying to coordinate and doing as we've done, we may not have the exact same restrictions in each jurisdiction depending on what's going on, but by at least implementing them in a, uh, in a time frame that's, that's close to each other, people aren't, you know, the public isn't as confused about what is and what's not in restriction. Yeah, and, and you know, you even driving from on 89A from Sedona into Cottonwood, you have there's that electronic sign that says countywide fire ban and you, I imagine those are kind of placed throughout the throughout the county, but yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, it was June 1st, maybe the day before, all of a sudden these press releases started showing up and so it was easy to determine, okay, listen, I, I'm not going to be able to do any burning really anywhere in the county. There are some um, maybe some minor differences between you know different departments or districts and and the national force but then we're going to get into a lot of those but overall i mean conditions are dry and i think some people might might say okay well we got some rain recently i mean early last week or two weeks ago there were a some light showers scattered throughout the area, but um, that doesn't really make a big difference, does it, Pete, when we have just a, a random rain shower or two in a week? Cor correct, yeah. uh, your statement's right on, a, a little explanation as to why. Um, primarily, what we're dealing with, as Mike pointed out, is the, the grass growth. This year, tremendous, uh, much like 2005, we had a pretty robust winter and, and early spring precipitation and that brought on great growth. The timing was perfect. Um, I, you know, I shared that with Paul when I was here last, that the timing was just perfect to really spur on that grass growth. Now it's cured and dried out. That grass is much more responsive to the daily cycle. If we get a little rain, then back to dry, or warm temperatures and wind, um, the grass and the fi what we call the fine fuels are very receptive to, to fire. So a single storm, a little, bit of, a little bit of rain really is not not much of a factor. What we look for is long periods of steady rain. Even the monsoons, when they come in hot and heavy, or I should say heavy rain, mm -hmm. we need it to be persistent day after day to make a difference. One big storm really doesn't make a difference until they start lining up. Yeah, and I think it was, um, I mean, we're really, until we get the monsoon storms arriving, it's uh, kind of high alert, and sure. of course, that's why we're in fire restrictions. So um, we're going to take our break. When we come back from break, we'll get into the specifics with the restrictions on the Prescott National Forest uh, within the city of Cottonwood and then throughout the county as well. For more information, we want to urge people to contact their local fire jurisdiction with, with any questions or details on restrictions in your area. For the Prescott National Forest, their fire information hotline 928-777-5799. For the city of Cottonwood Fire Department, 928-634-2741. This is Countywide, back in a couple minutes. education what are you gonna do graduate and take some office job be like everybody else or will you dare do something different like be a teacher you could be my teacher you got the skills the smarts yes you you could be the teacher i never forget that would be cool does that corporate job even have recess what are you gonna make of yourself what are you gonna make of me
Hits. Hit FM. Hit FM. Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Drizzy Drake. Ariana Grande. Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Mateo. I'm Sean Mendes. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. I'm a star boy. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch the Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9 and 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Stand with me. Be drug free. Stand with me. Be drug free. To make a difference, we must stand together. Stand with me. Be drug free. Supporting our families and listening to our teens. Stand with me, be drug free. Stand with me, be drug free. We are all one. No one is immune. Stand with me, be drug free. Let's stand together for a healthier community. Stand with me, be drug free. Welcome back to Countywide. We're talking fire restrictions across Yapai County. Countywide fire ban went into effect June 1st, and we're here with uh, Pete Gordon, Prescott National Forest Fire Staff Officer, and Mike Kirkendalm. He's the Cottonwood Fire and Medical Chief. So we, we covered kind of the um, what exactly goes into determining fire restrictions and how you guys look at the conditions of the fine fuels and just brush and grass across the, across the county, across the forest. Um, so Pete, when we're talking about, of course, fire restrictions, kind of give everyone a detailed um, overview of what is restricted across the Prescott National Forest. Sure. So we are in what we call stage one. Uh, the Forest Service has uh, three stages and we, sh we share a similar approach to other federal agencies that that manage our, our public lands. Um, so stage one is specifically a prohibition against campfires outside of our developed rec sites. So in other words, um, we had spoken off camera about dispersed camping. Um, it is legal to camp in the woods unless otherwise posted, it is pulling off the side of the road. This time of year under stage one, you can't have a campfire doing that. You must be in a campground, a picnic area. Essentially anything with a metal ring or a pedestal grill we're allowing campfires or fires in there. Um, you are also uh, prohibited from smoking in the woods if you're hiking a trail, et cetera. You must be in a vehicle or in an area that's cleared three feet of, of all debris. Um, so we really limit where you can smoke outside of a vehicle or a building. And then um, we also include on the Prescott National Forest, no shooting this time of year in stage one. Um, and that's really tied to some of the mistakes that have been made, some of the common sense issues we've seen with incendiary devices, exploding targets. Um, we've even had uh, occasions where fires were created by people shooting oxygen bottles and acetylene bottles. It's just, wow. yeah, um, hasn't been good and we found that we need to restrict shooting this time of year uh, for those, those kind of things. So that's our stage one. I think it's also worth mentioning that regardless of fire restrictions year round on every forest in the southwest region, um, exploding targets, incendiary devices, and fireworks are illegal year-round. Hmm. Okay, and that's across, I mean, that's every forest, the state. Every, every forest, forest in state. Arizona and New Mexico, um, okay. that's forbidden year-round. Okay, so basically, unless you're in a, um, grills and stuff and day use sites, does that, you're allowed? Yes, and we, we have a okay. list posted on the order and posted on our website, and I think in most of the media releases, there's mm -hmm. a list if folks are questioning which sites, we've named them all on the forest, okay. uh, but essentially picnic areas, day use, or campgrounds that have the metal rings or the pedestal grills, that's, a, that's legal at this time. Okay, and then um, if you're, of course, like you mentioned, um, out dispersed camping, pull off of one of the roads and just set up camp for the night, you're gonna be camping in the dark, because you can't have, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can have flashlights and all that stuff, um, you can also have you can have the propane uh, grills okay. or fireplaces where you can turn them on and off. That is legal at this time. Okay, so propane grills where they have the on and off switch. Yep. And um, other than that, you can't have an open no fire. Charcoal, no charcoal, no fire. wood fires, etc. Okay. And then again, for more information, Prescott National Forest Fire Information Hotline nine two eight seven 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 five seven nine nine. Or as uh, Pete mentioned, you can go to their website. They have a list of all of uh, everything really we're talking about here, and that's across all of the districts. Mm -hmm. or all of the ranger yes. districts. Okay, so um, Chief Kirkendall, what about within the uh, city of Cottonwood? What are the restrictions there? Well, in the city of Cottonwood, we in instead of, we don't have the three uh, levels, we have uh, re fire restrictions that we go in place or a fire ban when we get to complete. Uh, right now, we are in fire restrictions within okay. the city, and that means that all open fires are banned or, or prohibited at this time. I don't want to use the term banned. Uh, 
all open fires are prohibited, including fire pits and any kind of warming or campfires. And I know people do like to have those in the backyard, but right now those are prohibited. Uh, We've also suspended all of our burn permits, so there will, there's no open burning, uh, and also even uh, the use of anything that's a spark producing, welding, outside welding, you know, if it's outside of a structure, in the open welding or, or even uh, the use of chainsaws, uh, if it's not, it would be prohibited now unless you have a permit specifically from the fire department. What we are allowing and within the city of Cottonwood is people to still use their grills both charcoal and gas as long as it has a lid and has to be a functioning lid. Charcoal grill like a hibachi that doesn't have a lid would be prohibited whereas uh, a charcoal grill with a lid is allowed in your own residential uh, yard. In open public places a charcoal is, is prohibited, charcoal burning is prohibited in the city parks or any other recreation areas within the city mm. uh, outside of private uh, residences. Uh, we do prefer propane grills and of course we warn everybody make sure you're at least 10 feet from combustibles with your grill regardless of of what you're using but you do have to have a functioning lid so that you can put that on it okay so you can still have your backyard barbecues still have a backyard the, barbecue for the fourth is unless something changes unless some changes right and then um, with with uh, charcoal has to have a lid charcoal has to have a lid okay. yes and then uh, you can't you know can't have your warming campfire and your you know kumbaya right campfire now, your, right your fire your rings backyard. and your and the, your your those uh, fire pits and the things there are prohibited now okay right now. okay and then you, you can contact the uh, the cottonwood fire department uh, 634-2741 for more information on their restrictions and again we want to urge everyone to contact your local fire jurisdiction um, and then there's also this ban also i guess the countywide fire ban, you know, you're in restrictions within Cottonwood, but um, this also unincorporated areas of Yavapai County. Can you talk about that? Well, the unincorporated areas of, Yav of Yavapai County, this is outside of where you're covered by either a municipal fire department or a fire district or in the National Forest. If you're outside of those areas, um, then there is a, fire, a complete fire ban is in place. You have by county. Uh, they, uh, unlike us, we have two stages. They have three. The county it seem, it either seems to go in complete ban or not because they have. Those are mostly remote areas where there is no fire protection nearby. So uh, they have to be more restrictive in restricting it. So they have a complete fire ban, no open burning whatsoever mm. outside of the outside of at places that are served by either a municipal fire district or a fire district municipal fire or the forest. Okay. If you have any questions, just call. Call if there's any questions on what you're allowed to do. Um, and then, um, Pete, real quick before we take our next break, um, for anybody who's caught violating these restrictions, uh, is there a penalty? What's the penalty and what's kind of the incentive to not break the fire restriction? Um, sure. Of course, I can only speak for the, the Forest Service violations and codes there under the under federal law. Um, the incentive, number one, is life safety and, and protecting our natural resources. And I think that goes regardless of the jurisdiction and, and what public we're serving. Um, an unwanted fire uh, can cause damage and can hurt people or worse, uh, a loss of property or resources. So that's the incentive. If that's not enough, um, from the federal standpoint, uh, if it's a single individual, the fine could be as much as $5,000 and up to six months in jail. Um, if it's a group activity or there's a group of, uh, of folks uh, caught, it could be up to $10,000 as well as six months, up to six months in jail. Wow, okay, so yeah, don't mess around. And then you mentioned there's that fine, but there's also yeah. what can happen, just throwing a cigarette. Sure. out of your vehicle can uh, touch off a devastating fire. And real quick, uh, before the show, we actually had uh, Rick Chase from the Central yeah. Arizona um, Fire Authority, Fire and Medical yeah. Authority. He gave us a call. He's their fire marshal. And he said they've had calls recently with people um, burning weeds with propane torches. Yeah. Can either of you talk about the, the dangers of that? And, uh, of course, that's within Cottonwood, for example. That's not allowed, right? Chief? That would be prohibited within the city of Cottonwood right now. And, uh, and actually it's fairly dangerous any time of the year because people think that, that with that torch, uh, the torches were designed to burn weeds between rocks and, and things like that in, around your you know, uh, driveway and things like that. But people t tend to think that if they're using a torch that somehow it's safer. The reality is it sparks off, it starts a fire just like anything else would. Uh, and certainly at this time of year, 
uh, the danger is just as present there as it is with any other use of flame. Yeah, you know, yeah. the last couple months leading up to this, we were encouraging people to get rid of that yard debris, sure. create piles, get the permits, or do whatever they need to do to burn that safely. Can't do that anymore, really countywide for the That's, most part so yeah. okay well we're going to take our second break and we come back we'll talk about some of the uh, the responses the common responses whenever there's a, a report of a fire touched off uh, anywhere really in the county so this is countywide we'll be right back in a couple minutes hey you yeah you Getting that college education? What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else? Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills, the smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Trissy Dre. Ariana Grande. Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Adele. I'm Shawn Mendes. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The I'm Weeknd. A, I'm a star boy. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch The Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9. And 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Stand with me, be drug free. Stand with me, be drug free. To make a difference, we must stand together. Stand with me, be drug free. Supporting our families and listening to our teens. Stand with me, be drug free. Stand with me, be drug free. We are all one, no one is immune. Stand with me, be drug free. Let's stand together for a healthier community. Stand with me, be drug free. Welcome back to Countywide. Just a few minutes left in the program. Um, again, for more information on restrictions across the Prescott National Forest, their information hotline, 928-777-5799. Cottonwood Fire Department, 634-2741. And then Emergency Management, yeah, Pike County Emergency Management, want to give you that as well, 928-771-3321. Um, real quick, before we have to wrap it up here, um, something that we've noticed is, now, even if there's a small brush fire along the highway, any road, if, you, if it's a tenth of an acre, it seems like the standard response is forest service, neighboring agencies. Can, can you, maybe, Chief, you talk about um, that response and, and kind of the purpose for that? Well, I can t I'll speak to it, but then I'll, have Pete, I'll just speak from his standpoint. The, uh, we have within the, the fire service community, we dispatch center, Cottonwood dispatches for all the uh, departments, all the fire departments in the Verde Valley but we have uh, what they call low wildland season and high wildland season. Once we kick into high wildland season, it changes our response and uh, all of the, everyone I'm, that I'm aware of in the area, their response changes from, from their normal uh, response apparatus to add additional brush units mm -hmm. and to in include notification of the Forest Service and also the state forestry uh, fire people okay. uh, because so much of our, of our area encroaches either on state land or on forest service land. Okay. So, and can you talk about that? I mean, you said sure. something during break about that. Yeah, so um, the, the, from the Forest Service standpoint, our response is going to be uh, one of two things and sometimes both. Uh, the first is we'll, 
we have to consider whether it's a threat. You know, the Forest Service as a federal agency, we don't have jurisdiction on private or state lands, but through cooperative agreements and a lot of history, um, we do support each other. So if, if number one, we see it to be a threat to federal lands, um, we will often respond, uh, unified uh, response. Um, but we also, through these agreements, we also recognize that it's a partnership and, and we have latitude in some of our policies, even though it may not be on Forest Service land or may not be a direct threat, we have a, a small window of opportunity that we can support our neighbors, so whether it's a fire department or state land or another federal agency. Okay, yeah, and real quick, we want to also mention no fireworks on any national forest lands and then also within the city of Cottonwood. Right? Fireworks are, there's no legal fireworks in Cottonwood any time of the any year. Any time of the year, okay, great. It's forthcoming up, we're certainly concerned. Of course, yeah, so again, for more information, contact your local fire jurisdiction with any questions you have. Emergency management, 928-771-3321. Prescott National Forest, 928-777-5799. Cottonwood Fire Department, 928-634-2741. Google it. You'll find those numbers. A lot of numbers thrown at you. So that's going to do it. Thank you guys for joining us My today. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching and, and listening. We'll see you next time.